All right. Good morning, everybody. I, I think it's safe to say morning, uh, even, even if you're on the East Coast. Maybe if you're across the uh, ocean somewhere, uh, Scotland, perhaps, it may not be <laughs> morning for you. But uh, safe to say for most of the U.S., most of our audience, it is morning. So good morning, everybody. Uh, later this year, November 1st through 3rd, to be exact, in Austin, Texas, we will host the Entree Architect Community Annual Meeting. It's the business conference for entrepreneur architects. In fact, it's the first ever live conference that's dedicated just to small firm entrepreneur architects. And even though November sounds like it's a long way away, it's not. You know, just think about how fast this weekend went. November is uh, just around the corner. The conference will be here before you know it. So I started this new live stream series to introduce you to all of the fantastic speakers that will be at the conference. And then later, we'll give you a little bit of a teaser about their talks and their workshops that they're going to be presented. So with that, good morning, everybody. If we've never met before, my name is Jeff Eccles. I'm the Director of Brand Strategy for Entree Architect. It's the largest worldwide community of small firm architects. I'm also the host of Context and Clarity Live. And to kick off the uh, conversation today, I'm joined by someone that a lot of architects that I know could benefit from knowing. But instead of me rambling on through some sort of introduction here, let me just ask, who are you and what do you do? Good morning, Jeff. I am Megan Dolly. Um, I work with interior designers and architects to get a real handle on their money. I like to describe it with a timeline being if this is today, everything historical is taken care of with your bookkeeper CPA putting all the pieces in place. But what really keeps people up at night is this half over here, like what's going to happen in the future. So I help them see and understand that part. That's awesome. And, you know, that's, and, and, you know, we, we talk about this a lot at Entree Architect, Context and Clarity and other places. One of the, this, I guess some people will debate this, but one of the big deficiencies, at least in, in my, in my mind is that we get zero business training in architecture school. And so there are a lot of us that um, have never thought about what you just said. Right, the historical piece of it and the, the the roles and the people there and looking well today and then looking forward and the the different roles um, in in relationship to your your finances looking forward so you mentioned interior designers and architects are those your ideal clients or do you mm, define yeah. it even more tightly than that uh, um, 10 employees or fewer, like small, okay, small, small firms. firms. Awesome. Absolutely. Small firms where truly a accounting is not designed for the small firm. Like it was designed for large corporations and then bequeathed down to us because it was the system that was right. Um, and so it's, if it were as useful as people claim it is when they say, know your numbers, people wouldn't yeah. be doing their books last second when taxes are due once a year Fair in enough. April, right? There's yeah. something else that's missing that really gives people the visibility to run the business in a way that serves their true wants and needs. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And again, that's that's something that this community talks about a lot. You know, I, I, the majority of the Entree Architect community is probably somewhere between a sole practitioner and say about 10, maybe 15, maybe 20 employees, but uh, the vast majority being on the small side, which is why we talk about this being a community of, of small firm architects, not just in the U.S., but all around the world. And, and when, when, we, when we get into these conversations about the business of architecture, you just hit on one of those, those realities. A lot of what's out there, a lot of the wisdom that's out there is for something larger, um, right. you, you know, the, everybody in this community that's wearing the 17 hats of the entrepreneur has to figure all of these different things out. So I, I love that you're focused on that. Um, and, and not, not focused on that. That's a bad way to say it. Focused on this size firm because we really need help. How, how did you get into focusing on, on this niche? 
the small or the the creatives um, um the small is like i've always had a heart for it that's my mom she had a small computer business and that's actually how i became an accountant she handed me a book called accounting for non-accountants and she's like you're my bookkeeper now I'm like, okay <laughs> um and then they're like just throughout my career the thing that was missing that the people who had questions were the ones with the small business like i read this book how does it apply to me well it yeah doesn't let me retranslate that for you in a way that's useful for your business. Um, and interior design has always been a love. I have a minor in interior design, but that's okay. as far as that's I, a connection. I <laughs> and I worked for an interior design, um, a contract furniture dealership for mm -hmm. a while. And then I just, I just love interior design. I love the architecture. I love watching people who are good at their craft, come up with the thing and the composition of it. So this is my little way of, getting to be on the inside and seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, and, and I think even though, you know, you may be a sole practitioner or maybe you've got a couple of employees or whatever, I, I think, you know, one of the things we have to ask ourselves is um, how much of this should we be doing? And, and maybe that's marketing, maybe it's business development, maybe it's the accounting, maybe it's the numbers side of things. So do you have any advice or, or when, when, Let's let's talk about this way. When you're when you meet a prospective client, small mm -hmm. firm architect, let's say, um, how do you how do you walk through this process and figure out if they're the right client for you and and if you're the right solution for them and what what's the uh, what's the wisdom that you impart in those conversations? So I want to know where they're at and what um how comfortable they are with with their numbers their money all of the things that go into it if you have a bookkeeper and a cpa fantastic that means that we're going to have a good starting spot that's all clean but a lot of what keeps people from seeking help is they don't want anybody to see their books they're like uh. they're truly embarrassed by what is going on behind the scenes with their books and that's like 90% of the businesses that I come across. Wow. Um, so my first step is really just diffusing that anxiety, that self-judgment that they have about all those things, because honey, it's bad for everybody. Like <laughs> it's taking off your clothes in front of a stranger. Um, and, and starting from there, what I'm really interested in before we get started is when I work with any client now is what do you, what good do you want to see for other people in your world? Because that's how I find my clients. If you don't have an answer yeah. for what you want for other people, we're probably not a fit. But when you have a vision for how the world is going to be a better place because of how you work and who you work with, ding, 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 that's first step. We have a winner. Um, and after that, now I really want to help you. I want to you to be able to see like, oh, I never thought about what it is that I need and what I want out of my business. That always almost comes secondarily. Yep. And then the, is your business capable of providing that? And that's where I'm like, that's where the big come in for my clients. So it's, it's giving them the stability to sit back and think about what they really want. Is my business capable of doing this in the terminology and the tools and able to be able to do that? Um, and then from there, they pretty much self-select like, yes, that is what I need. Or they'll go back and they'll be like, no, actually, I, I need to get some stuff cleaned up first before we talk. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, that really resonates because one of the original things that when when Mark R. LePage launched Entree Architect originally as a, a blog 10, 12 years ago now, uh, one of the first things that he talked about was building a strong business that allowed you to practice your art. And that's that's you know, a, a common mentality here with, and I know interior designers are similar architects, certainly um, the great problem solvers of the world, right? I love doing this. I love being able to solve other people's problems. Oh yeah, there's this business. Um, <laughs> what What is this business going to allow me to accomplish? And maybe it's some sort of freedom. Um, maybe it's some sort of family connection. Um uh, you know, who, who knows what the, uh, what those things are. You, you have a course, don't you? I do. I do have a course. Um, so all of these different questions that I'm going through with, with my process, like, what do I need and what do I want? There's a, there's a little tool for that, but yes, I have a course. It's the cash calendar. Um, 
it's so people can see the next three, six, 12 months of what's going to happen with, with their cash, right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I going to be okay? Is there a cliff coming? Do I need to get my head out yeah. of the sand and plan for something? So, oh, that's coming in three months. We better fix that before the train hits. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I wanted to bring that up because one of the conversations that's popped up I, probably more and more often over the last month or two is this idea of a recession. And, you know, some will point out that technically we're, we're in a recession, but what we're really talk, talking about, what we're really concerned about is a downturn as it would um, affect the businesses of, of, in our community, right? The small firm architects. And, and, uh, I think that's one of the first things that we have to do is get a handle on where our business is. So I love that idea of really being able to go, okay, am I okay? What do I need to do? What do I need to adjust? What do I need to, uh, it um, is the scariest, up? bravest question you can ask in your business is to look up and look down the road because the easy it's easy to be like oh i have a feeling that something bad is coming and i'm just going to keep working harder harder and harder and yeah, finding advice yeah. and tweaking things but without looking up and seeing well what really is the risk what really is on what are you foreshadowing out here do you really need to be doing all of that or is there a single lever that we can be pulling here yeah yeah, that makes sense. I see Rob, or Bob has joined us over from LinkedIn. Hi, Bob. He says, um, let me just pop him up on the screen here. Get his comment here. Bob says, how do you want, how do you want to help other people? If no answer, then we're not a great fit. Great filter for targeting the right clients. Kudos to you. So, uh, it was a very uh, expensive lesson to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and that's, that is exactly why uh, we talk so much about ideal clients because, and, you know, I think we've all got these, these war stories, these horror stories about, uh, um, you know, I've, I've got one and, you know, our community knows the story and versions of the story, but sitting down in 2008 with our staff going, here's seven reasons that we shouldn't take this project. But I know that if we don't take it Monday morning, we're going to be looking at each other. It's like 2008, 2009, something like that. Um, I know we won't have anything uh, to be working on come Monday morning. So we're going to take it. And oh my gosh, you know, the the horror stories that, that come out of that, you know, we... We, we learn, right? We learn. <laughs> now, let me, let me ask. No more judgment. Learned it. Valuable. Got yeah. it. Well, I, that's, that's part of it, right? That's part of the journey. We have to, we have to be able to learn those lessons. Um, let me ask you about hiring for profit. I've noticed that on your, on your LinkedIn. What's that? Ooh, that's like one of the major questions that I get from my clients. The second most popular is, can I hire? Right. And we, yeah. we hire from a direction of, I have so much to do. And I just need somebody to come. Reactionary. And help. Yes. It's reactionary yeah. hiring. And so the decision needs a little bit more thought. Two things for me is, is it going to be profitable? And there's two definitions of, of profitable in this scenario. The first one is like straight up profit. Like, can I, do I have enough work? Can I hand them enough work so I can go out and get more work? It's truly like right. profit bottom right. line. How long is it going to take for this relationship to be profitable? And the second one is like profitability in terms of uh, quality of life, you know, like the things that getting them off your plate and truly mapping out how the numbers are going to work. Like if you're hiring for that second criteria of getting stuff off my plate, um, how's the money going to work with that? Right. Like yeah. if I'm going to hire somebody at four thousand dollars a month, I want to make sure that looking down the road, <laughs> that four thousand dollars is totally worth it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I love looking at profit in sort of two different ways, two different definitions. Um, one of the things we're going to talk a lot about in context and clarity throughout this week is growth. And what does that mean? So that, that will tie to that a little bit, you know, growth may mean a lot of things. It may mean people, it may mean, um, cash flow, it, you know, there's a lot of different ways that, that small business owners can look at growth. So I love, I love the different perspectives there, the different considerations. Um, in, I've, I've mentioned context and clarity a couple of times 
And maybe that's a little bit of foreshadowing because we've got a special treat coming up. Next week on Context and Clarity Live, Megan will be our guest, our special guest. On, so it'll be Thursday. That'll be uh, August 18th. So Megan will be our Context and Clarity Live guest um, for uh, for that show next week on Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. But then you'll be back here again on September 26th for a preview of the talk that you'll be doing at the Entree Architect Community Annual Meeting, which is really why we're here today. Um, so I don't want to give away too much because you'll be back on, on the 26th to talk more about your actual presentation. But um, maybe in a few sentences, what's what's the title of your talk? What are you going to be talking about in Austin? Why your financial statements are mostly useless. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was I was reading that title and I thought, well, this is going to blow people's minds. Yeah, a virtual CFO and she's talking about financial statements being useless. <laughs> <laughs> mostly, mostly, mostly. mostly, mostly. <laughs> yes, this is specifically for these small businesses. Truly, like, how often do you look at your income statement and you're floored, surprised, yeah. right? Like, what else? That's that's like what what else? That's the big hole that needs to be filled. Awesome, I love it. Bob says uh, he's been there. He's responding to uh, the, the comment about uh, learning, learning from mistakes. And uh, John Jones is also joining us over on the LinkedIn side. He says he's a big fan of Megan. John is in Connecticut, so welcome, John. Glad you're here. You've got a fan club developing here <laughs> before before we even get to the annual meeting. That's awesome. Oh, John's Love amazing. He's, he's so good and generous. That's one of the things about your community that you've developed is that it's just so generous and giving and people don't hold back and they're so welcoming yeah. with other people and it's incredible. Yeah, well, thank you for that. I mean, that, that, that's that's really the basis of what we're building. I mean, we, we take that community piece of it very, very seriously. It's This is not... Um, Community, no offense, software companies, but this is not community in terms of, oh, hey, we have this group that helps you um, answer all of your tech questions. No, this is a community that learns from each other and shares with, with each other and supports each other. So, um, so yes, thank you. Thank you for that. It's great. Uh, great to have such a, um, uh, such a get dedicated group of people. Again, architects from around the world, small firm architects from around the world. Uh, show up for conversations and to ask questions and to mentor each other. So it's fantastic. And um, we're really glad that, uh, that you're becoming so involved in everything that we're doing, um, including speaker at the uh, upcoming Entree Architect Community Annual Meeting. Um, Megan Dolly, she's the virtual CFO and the creator of Hiring for Profit. She'll be talking about why financial statements are useless or mostly useless <laughs> and what to do instead, right? what, or maybe what to do in addition to your financial statements. Uh, all of this is going to happen at the Entree Architect Community Annual Meeting in Austin, Texas, November 1st through 3rd. If you're a small firm, if you own a small firm, or maybe you aspire to own a small architecture firm, or even if you're an employee, if you work for a small ar architecture firm, go over to entrearchitect.com slash annual meeting for more information about the conference. Again, it's the first ever live conference dedicated just to small firm entrepreneur architects. Check it out. I promise that you won't be disappointed. Uh, we're going to have great speakers just like Megan and, and uh, I think we've got two more interviews lined up this week. You're hearing from them over and over. Um, between now and November, introducing them, um, hearing about their talks. Um, so stay tuned. Again, Megan will be back, first of all, next week on Context and Clarity Live, which will be an awesome thing. And then back September 26th to talk more about financial statements and you know what they're good and not good for. So Megan, thanks a lot for joining me today. My pleasure, uh, Jeff. This has been fun. Absolutely. Glad that uh, glad that we were able to do this. And to everybody out there, uh, go connect with Megan on LinkedIn and uh, share this interview, if you will. And check back next week, Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern 
Context and Clarity Live, and then back again September 26th to uh, give you more about what she's going to be talking about at the Entree Architect annual meeting. So I put that URL in the bottom left of your corner right now, uh, entrearchitect.com slash annual meeting, two words smashed together like they were one. Um, <laughs> go check that out and you'll, uh, you'll learn more about the, the, uh, the actual conference. You'll see all about the speakers and uh, you can register from there as well. So again, Megan, thank you. Um, Thanks to Bob and John out there in the audience and anybody else that has joined us, but, uh, and Ethan, uh, great to have all of you with us and, uh, everybody else that's out there. Even if you didn't comment, great to have you along for the ride. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate all of you have a great day and we'll see you soon.